Good morning, Vietnam. American in distress. America is distressed. News. It's not mentioned in the news that should be mentioned. I believe. Get right to it and make this fast. Don't take your time. Sharif's not going to like this. Thousands of troops. Thousands. Deploying to Israel. What the hell are they going to do there? Well, they think that they're going to uh, get ready to attack Tyran uh, Iran, but I think they're there because to keep that uh, Suez Canal open to ensure that stays open no matter what. And of course, this is nothing new. Uh, we have been to Israel before. Uh, let's see what we have here in the box. Oh, look at that. That's me in Israel. It's a bunker we built. Probably still being used way out there in the middle of bump fuck nowhere. I mean, I thought I was going to get to smoke some hash and some bango. Shit, man. We, we were so far out in the boondocks. We never even seen humans. We thought it was, if we seen a goat, we thought it was a big thing. Or a camel or something. But this is nothing new. But we, this is big news to me. We need to keep an eye on this. Everybody's positioning, positioning themselves. And um, it's an election year, so it's kind of strange. But we'll see what happens. U.S. is exporting oil, exporting oil for the first time in decades. Why do you ask? They are they exporting oil? They claim that the because of the economy, which we're out of the recession now, right? But the economy is still slow and sluggish, and there's not the demand, so we are exporting. But the only way we can export and it still be profitable is we have to keep the price of oil artificially inflated up to over hundred dollars a barrel or at least at least 90 somewhere around there in that area otherwise it's not profitable to get this oil out of the ground or it's not profitable to operate those sand oil sand extraction operations up there in Canada the reason they wanted to build that pipeline across uh, North America there down to Louisiana so they can refine that oil they're extracting out of the sand pits up there in Canada again and if it goes below a hundred dollars a barrel but well guess what they're going to close those operations down and they're going to close most of the operations down in America and we have seen in history it happened in Texas more than once a few times gas goes way down they shut the operations down everybody's starving gas goes up they got the Rolls Royce dealerships going it's a, it's a boom and bust sort of uh, industry it's not like it's not viable as, say, manufacturing something that everybody's going to use every day for every day of their life and getting it out there on the market. No, that's all done in China now. I think this is what's going to happen is, is the oil is going to go down. It's going to go to like $40, $40 a barrel, maybe $35 a barrel, maybe even lower. We are being attacked in our markets. And a way to get to a real big blow would be a huge blow would be to drop the price of oil down so low that the, these all these American corporations, these investment guys, these speculators, how many how many people have investments in oil corporations for their retirement? I mean, it would all be gone in a, in a minute if gas crashes or oil crashes, and it could happen. I think we should consider that. And there are jobs coming back coming back to America from China. This Minnesota company plans to manufacture flat screen TVs in Michigan starting in March. They're going to hire about 100 people. They're going to be mostly minimum wage paying jobs. But they're not going to manufacture anything here. It says in this article they are going to just assemble them. And all the rest of the parts will still be made in China. And what's going to happen is, is as soon as the stimulus or the tax breaks run out on this, they'll just move it down to Brazil or Mexico. Either one. Which brings me to the Chinese. Chinese workers threaten mass suicide if working conditions aren't fixed. Manufacturing TV parts. Other things. But the, the uh, mainstream media and Alex Jones even reported this was over wage, wages, benefits. No. It was over working conditions. I kept saying that. I get, kept getting reading articles on this. Be there in one day and one day they're not there. A, uh, unidentified worker 
says that we were, we were put to work without any training after they, they were made a new assembly line to make some parts for Sony or something and we were put to work without any training and paid piecemeal that means you got paid by the amount of parts you made and they had no training so they had no idea what they were doing so they're working for basically nothing said one of the protesting workers the assembly line ran very, very fast and just after one morning we all had blisters and the skin on our hands was black the factory also really choked with dust and no one could bear it and the now this is nothing new to them the suicides back in 2010 they had 18 attempts when workers threw themselves from the top of the buildings and 14 deaths their solution was after that one instead of improved conditions was to just simply put a, a net around the building and um, probably made by some factory in China the net with horrible working conditions they're manufacturing nets to go around buildings with horrible working conditions and they have horrible working conditions manufacturing the nets the nets that go around the buildings with horrible work, working conditions but they can bring these jobs to America and Americans won't refuse them. Americans, good Americans, want to work. And if it's toxic and fucked and shitty, you know, they know they don't have a choice. Because all the manager has to say is, Look, listen, there's a hundred people behind you that wants this job. So if you want to quit, quit. And that's what they tell people nowadays. That's your choice in America. We are serfs. Okay. Then we had this one. Wait, I want to go here this one first here. Hang on, one more. Oh, radioactive material stolen in Egypt. Okay, this is a level radioactive material used in devices that will test for radioactive leaks and all kinds of things like that. But it was stolen out of a safe. But this isn't the first time it's happened. It also happened while we were invading Iraq. A nuclear research center outside of Baghdad. Looters stole radioactive celsium and cobalt sources. They also dumped some 200 stolen barrels containing yellow cake, processed uranium ore, in the vicinity of the site. And I'm thinking, yeah, and how many troops came rolling through there? How many bombs hit that ground that stirred that crap up in the air and it just went flying and floating everywhere? How much of that stuff is still present over there? It just probably goes to, I mean, it sticks to everything. 200 barrels of yellow cake, they just dumped it on the ground, and we come rolling through there with tanks and vehicles and the dust, and it's all stirred up. Remember all those, when we were first attacking, they had all those uh, sandstorms and shit that was going on, all this shit just, just blowing everywhere. Can you believe that? And they dumped 200 stolen barrels. How many did they take with them? Were these the ones they just couldn't take with them, didn't have enough room for? This stuff was never found. Never, ever found. Fucking crazy, man. Uh, and that's about it then. Well, we had this one more story. Now, this story is right out of a, right out of a Tom Clancy novel. A couple of years ago, some Japanese nationals were stopped at, the, at an airport in Italy with a suitcase with a false bottom containing $34 billion in U.S. Treasury bonds. And it, there was a couple stories here and there. The Japanese nationals somehow just disappeared. Uh, it was a big thing for a couple days, and the story was buried. The Wall Street Journal had a little story, maybe Bloomberg. But this is a follow-up story here, January 18th. I kind of keep just tabs on this stuff to see what's happening, because it still interests me. Nothing was ever said about it in the mainstream news, and people just sort of forgot about it. But in 1930, a plane crashed down there in the Philippines somewhere in a river. The river dried up. The, contain the plane, you know, of course, then was visible, and the people went in to see what the hell was in it in the plane, the scavenge. And there was 12 boxes that contained $300 billion in bonds. And the bonds were not in anybody's name. It was whoever the bearer of the bond was, belonged. To, that bond belonged to that person. And they, these are the bonds they had, had gotten caught with in that airport. But it's a long, it's a, not a ter terribly long story, but it's interesting. It's like a movie. It's like a, it's a Tom Clancy story, but it's true. These people went in this horrible snake-infested jungle and alligators and shit and they brought this shit out and how the uh, Italians got a hold of it and some other people got a hold of it and it was making its way to Switzerland and some of these bonds actually had matured and the interest rate was over a hundred million dollars on some of these bonds it's really crazy man but um 
It's a good story. I thought if you ever have a time, a couple minutes a day, read it. I gotta go. This is Duck Out. Uh, American in Distress. Let me get my American in Distress thing here. American in Distress. Duck Out.